Um, I'm prototyping an app for my Quest 2 using Unity. And I happened to get to the stage where I needed to do some some testing and debugging and stuff. And Ultimate XR um, released 0.8 this week. So um, I thought I'd have a look at using that because that framework, although it sits on top of the Oculus integration in my case here, um, uh, just seems a lot more friendly and, and intuitive than the, the actual Oculus integration um, SDK itself, which, you know, works, but it's, it's just it's like pulling teeth sometimes. So here we are. Um, there's actual hand recognition at the moment. Um, doesn't do interaction with objects like that yet, but it does do UI. So you see here I've just switched on Engine A with my finger. Switched off Engine A with my finger. Um, so I'm sure um, actual finger interaction is on the way. I'm going to pick up my controllers. Oh, perhaps you can hear the ice cream van coming. It's a very hot day today. Um, yeah, so that's the controllers. You press some buttons and they, they look like and behave like hands. And again, you can switch on Engine A, switch off Engine A. But um, basically to try it all out, I wanted to, to build a steering wheel. It came up in the Discord and um, it was really straightforward. So I put a grab point at the 10 o'clock position and the 2 o'clock position. And you can have both at once. I've told it to stop at minus 70 degrees and 70 degrees. And it all works. Um, similarly, I've got a wee throttle control here. That just goes forward and back. Um, so if you have a little look at the uh, oh, CCTV type thing here, uh, I'm going to switch on engine A. And this little ghost car will drive. So I'm giving it some throttle. And I'm steering it. And I say car, it's, it's more like a hovercraft. I didn't want to confuse things anymore with fuel colliders and all the rest. So here she comes. Oh, don't crash. Right, there you go again. So that does everything it should. And this is set. You can do the whole white guys drive like that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, back a bit. Uh, da, da, da. All works exactly as we would expect and hope. So it's really straightforward. Um, however, if we turn off engine A, turn on engine B, it's this one, we start to move, and as soon as we start to move, we start to see weirdness. So that's me, I'm trying to pull all the way back, oh, and now it comes. Let's turn this a little bit. So, throttle one on, oh, throttle was locked on, away in front, I've pulled all the way back, nothing's happening. But as you see, if I spin back round, spin back round, and just as we start to even up again, it's going to spring back. Bang. Now it's forward, backwards, oh, stuck again. It's going to wait till we come round. Once it comes round, it spins back. So it seems like, just without getting into all the documentation, any great length, popping the avatar onto a moving platform itself seems to, to give us gimbal lock interaction. It's very clear. Uh, gimbal lock problems with interaction. It's very clear on the throttle there. This is me. I'm pulling back. I'm pulling back. I'm, I'm My hand's up here somewhere. Nothing's happening. But once we come back around, oh, there we go. Uh, but if you turn off this engine, forward, back, forward, back, no sticking. Same sort of thing's probably happening with the steering. It's just obviously a lot more difficult to tell what's going on with the steering. Um, I think that's what the problem is. Right, engine B, see if we can get this car come back to us. Right, get up there. There you go, there you are. Come on. Oh, doing donuts. Yeah. Right, let's wait. Look, hovercrafts are really difficult to drive, okay? I speak from real world experience. Whee! Come on, over this way.
Anyway, short video. Um, I'll go figure out how to make it happen. Bye!